Sim Update 10 for Microsoft Flight Simulator is due to arrive at the end of August. It's currently in beta testing, there's a whole lot of additions being made to the game. Here is a look at every single headline feature, and there is a lot, it's a chunky update, very nice one with a huge amount of details and features that people have been looking forward to for a very long time. So let's start with a few of those. One that you'll be very happy with to hear, I'm, I'm very sure, is multi-monitor support. So this is for players, simmers, who want to use two monitors, three monitors or more. Now this comes as an experimental feature and is available on the new experimental tab accessible through the main menu. You can see that right here on the screen. There's a few other features here, we'll touch on those in just a moment. For multi-monitor though, you want the button right at the bottom of the screen, add new render window. When you select that, this will simply add a new rendering window, it does exactly what it says on the tin. Now we can set the resolution of this extra window, I've set it just at 720p, roughly thereabouts, and I've put it in windowed mode. You then got lateral rotation offset, vertical rotation offset, as well as a rolled rotation offset, depending on where you want the uh, window located. This one is going to be on the right, and uh, it's on the left here, but we can see I've just tabbed it there, it's exactly the same, we've only offset it at half a degree. If we offset that a little bit more, you can see how that actually it rotates the camera around a bit, and we can continue go doing that uh, to whatever your offset preference actually is. And it moves around a little bit more, so we can just, yeah, that's basically how you do it, very, very easy to do. So I'm just going to go with the 72% for that one for now, we're going to add another render window. This will mean we've got three windows currently being rendered. We're going to offset this in the opposite direction, around about the same amount. There we go, and you can now see we've got three different windows. So each of these could be placed on a different monitor and then added for the screen if you so want, and you can set them to whatever resolution. Now in terms of performance and how this actually plays out, I will have another video coming up very, very soon on that, so do keep an eye out for it. We're going to detail and see how that affects performance and exactly how good it all is. Now moving on to another feature. This one is a quality of life improvement, and I actually really do like this one. It's an improvement and change to the VFR map. So as you can see on the screen, we've now got a search box at the top of the VFR map. We can type an airport code in there, indeed pretty much anything else as well. That'll take us straight to the location. You can then select that location and get all the relevant details over on the right. So I'm sure this is going to be very useful for pretty much any simmer out there, especially those who rely on VFR. Now you saw me use the search method to locate this particular airport, but you can also manually select any airport on the VFR map as well. Selecting them will also bring up the relevant details in the right hand panel and all the information there as well, so lovely, lovely stuff. Microsoft have pointed out that this nice addition come about thanks to the efforts of a working title, a third party developer there working in partnership with Microsoft. Okay, so another headline feature is NVIDIA DLSS. People have been requesting this one for a very long time, so Microsoft and Asobo have finally put it in. It's rather unusually located in the anti-lazing options under the main menu graphical options. I'm not sure why Sobo put it here, a bit of an odd option. That's certainly going to confuse some people I'm sure, but nonetheless it does work pretty well. I've made another video on detailing at the current beta performance of NVIDIA DLSS. You can see that linked in the video description. And I will return to the subject again once we get the final release version of Sim Update 10 just to see how and if there's been any improvements. And talking of improvements, there's been a number of improvements added into DirectX 12. This includes stability, performance and memory usage improvements. Now there are some known issues here, Microsoft have pointed them out. These are graphic artifacts that prevent you from enjoying the game in VR, uh, with DirectX 12 enabled at the moment. They say they're investigating this, so hopefully they get that figured out for the full release. Okay, so moving on to other areas, Asobo have implemented a new cloud layer system. This will allow for better vertical precision at low altitudes, and they say it will better reflect various cloud altitudes and the thickness when those clouds are closer to the ground. So Microsoft and Asobo have continued to work here on clouds. These have been something that have been very much a work in progress uh, right from day one, in fact, before release. The short of this is that it appears clouds have gone through various implementations over the years as Asobo try and narrow in on great quality as well as a great performance. It seems they're struggling to get both of those at the moment. 
Now, the Garmin G1000, this has been getting a massive upgrade to the G1000 NXi. So, the NXi is going to now be the default version of the G1000 in the sim. So, the NXi unit comes with a bunch of new features, a whole load of them in fact. Right here, we've got listed VNAV, procedure turns, holds, arc legs, visual approaches, accurate autopilot modes, full RNAV, and they say much, much more. Currently, I'm unable to find a full list of all the features listed on the forums. It would be a nice addition, something we may get later on. For now though, the NXi is definitely going to be worth experimenting with, especially if you've been reliant on it and using it a lot over the past few years. Now, on the subject of using things over the past few years, push trip activities have been somewhat problematic, specifically a saving a progression. I know this has been a problem for me and it's also been a problem for many other people, judging on the comments in the videos as well as on the official forums. Now, Sobo say that they've finally fixed several systems that are related to all of this. Of specific note, they say overall progression system improvements and making sure we refuel after each leg of completion. So like I say, this has been a problem for a very long time. Very pleased to see that Asobo have finally got on top of this one and hopefully fixed it. Again, let's wait for full release here to see if they actually have fixed it, but currently all signs are looking good. Also looking good are the vision improvements made to boats and ships within the game. All boats now have a wake when moving. You'll have seen this previously with the uh, new aircraft carrier that was added in the Maverick DLC. So it's one of those small additions which actually does add a lot of nice visual flair to the game overall, especially if you're flying over an area with a lot of shipping traffic. Now very quickly here, I want to head back to discussing that experimental menu. In there, you'll have noticed an option for low power mode. This come about because a lot of people are having issues when in the main menu. The game, the CMA, basically runs very, very hot when in that main menu uses a lot of GPU power and CPU power because it's rendering that hanger in the background. This is something that simmers have wanted changed and wanted fixed, basically so they're not running but burning away at their PC unnecessarily. So the now low power option is aimed at fixing that. What it does is replace the hanger in the background with a blurred out image. So in theory, this should be a very effective fix. However, in practice, it's somewhht different. When you replace the hanger with the blurred out image in low power mode, that translates to well, significant frame rates now being generated. All it's got to do is generate this blurred out image so it pushes the frame rate up and about by a factor of three, as you can see on the screen right here. But that said, Sobo working to point out there are other ways of saving a power consumption on your PC. Simply enable the V-Sync, they say. And you can also change your frame rate limit. This text here has now been changed to better reflect what's actually going on. They also said that when the V-Sync is enabled, it will limit frame rate to 20 FPS when the sim is minimized. Likewise, your sim's current frame rate, whatever that frame rate is, will be halved if you launch a download. So if you go to the marketplace and start downloading a big world update, you don't really want to be sitting on that download bar with maximum frame rate. So here, the sim has now been designed to halve your frame rate whilst on that progress bar. Another experimental feature is the ability to order packages. Now basically this allows you to, well, choose which order you want the packages to load in. This will be very useful for any incompatibility or compatibility problems that you may be facing. So definitely worth giving a try if you're having any issues there. Now elsewhere, as with all the sim updates, there's a brand new landing challenge. This one is going to be especially interesting due to low cloud cover. It requires the use of ILS for that landing. The plane available for this particular landing challenge is the Cessna Citation CJ4. Remaining on the subject of planes for just a moment, the planes that come with the premium and deluxe version of the sim always used to be encrypted. This meant that they officially couldn't be modded. The good news here then is that with the sim update 10, this encryption has now been removed. It will mean that in future, the premium and deluxe versions of the planes that come with the sim can now be modded. So looking forward to seeing what the community comes up with that. Okay, so that covers all the main headline features in the sim update 10. As you can tell, there's quite a few of them. Some of them are very good indeed. Elsewhere in the update, you'll find plenty of stability fixes, some navigation and traffic improvements, 
a whole load of fixes to the various planes. There's that uh, G1000 changelog as well, which uh, brings some additional changes to the NXI that's been in the sim for quite a while now. But yet, yeah, keep in mind that is now the default version of the G1000. There's also a few world changes made, some minor ones there, several small airport improvements, for example, as well as some UI changes. Now, there's also been some VR improvements and changes made, which I think people are definitely going to appreciate. For example, there's depth reprojection option, adding world scale perception as an optional slider, which you can find in the VR graphic settings. And they've also fixed the in-game panel sizes. So all in all, looking like a pretty good update. Of course, that's not to say everything is perfect. There's definitely a few issues there, but keep in mind, this is still a beta, so I don't want to focus too much on those particular problems. Some of them, though, do center around performance issues in DirectX 12 specifically, but also with pop-out displays and a few other problems as well. But there's still a month to get all of this sorted out. So let's see how things stand when we get close to the live version of the Sim. Sim Update 10 currently is scheduled for the 23rd of August. Everything else you need to know is available in the video description. Do take a look. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.